Jesus, acknowledging you that you are my Father, my God. Father God, I ask you to forgive me of any sins of omission or commission. Father God, I, I trust you and I believe you, Father God, and I come to the throne of grace boldly that I may ha obtain grace and find mercy in the time of need. Father, you are the source of my strength and the strength of my life. I trust you, Lord. I thank you that your word will go forth and it will not return unto you void. I thank you that you're almighty God, omnipotent God, you're present God, Father God, and I thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ, as the son of God. I thank you for the divine person of the Holy Spirit that keeps us, guides us, leads us, and even teaches us. Father, thank you that you will get your glory today. It's not about me. It has nothing to do with me, Father God. So get me out of my mind and myself that your will will be done, that the Spirit of God will speak through me. In Jesus' name, I thank you and I pray. Amen. Amen. Done. Praise God. Amen. Today, I have a question. I have some questions for the church today. My first question is, are your hands given life or death to your spirit? Can anybody work with me right now? Are your hands given life or death to your spirit? Huh? I heard somebody said, I'm giving life. Praise God. <coughs> so I want you to listen to uh, uh, carefully. Uh, somebody going to probably say, oh, wait a minute, I done got lost. No, you're not going to get lost. You're going to stay with me. Amen. So I want you to stay with me today, and I want you to hear what the Spirit of God has to say to the body of Christ today. I think it's going to be enlightening to someone, and I think somebody's going to go home and say, oh, wow, I need to think about this right here. How come this get on my thing? You got to go. Yeah, thank you, Father. I'm going to say it again. Are your hands given life or death to your spirit? Give you something to think about for a minute. I hear a whole lot of mumbling, too. <clears throat> so listen carefully. When we talk, the, the subject that I'm making is going to take, that I'm talking about today, going to take you somewhere. Number one, clean hands maintain purity. You know, cleanness and they are unstained. Uh, are your hands stained? Look at them. Number two, unclean hands carry dirt, filth, and bacteria. It multiplies, which causes spiritual death and separation from God. Should I say that again? Unclean hands carry dirt, filth, and bacteria. It multiplies, which causes spiritual death and separation from God. Are your hands clean or dirty? I can't get an answer. So I'm going to ask you another question. What are your hands, what are your hands busy doing right now? Uh, what are your hands been busy doing this morning? What are your hands been busy doing last night? Anybody with me right now? So I want to share something with you. The reason why I use this analogy this way, are your hands given life or death to the spirit? And then I want to talk about clean hands, but also talk about unclean hands. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'll say it one more time. Excuse me. Unclean hands carry dirt, filth, and bacteria. It multiplies, which causes spiritual death and separation from God. I want you to remember the word multiplies. I want you to remember that. And the reason why I'm bringing it this way, because I want my, my text is in Matthew chapter 12. Come on with me now. I want you to work with pastor today because I believe somebody's going to wake up today. Amen. So in the book of Matthew chapter 12, Matthew chapter 12, and I'm going to start at verse 43. Listen very carefully. When an evil spirit comes out of a person, he goes through the dry places looking for a place to rest. Yeah. But it doesn't find any. Then it says, I'll go back to the home I left. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean, and in order. Verse 45 says, Then it goes and brings along seven other spirits, more evil than itself. They enter and take up permanent residence there. What am I talking about? I'm talking about when I said, Are your hands clean? 
Are they unclean? So I'm going to take you a little further. Are your body clean or it's unclean? Are your spirit clean or is it unclean? What kind of spirit are you dealing with? So to come to this position that I'm talking about here, one of the reasons why I wanted to come this way about hands, why I'm talking about your hands, because do you realize that your hands can cause a lot of bacteria depending on where you touch your body at? Yeah. Uh, and then not only does it get the bacteria in you, I mean on you, but it gets in your body system. Yeah. Huh? It's called infection. Anybody hear me today? So what I'm talking about in Matthew chapter 12, I'm talking about the infection. What are your hands doing and your body doing right now? What is infecting you that the demons are coming in you? Hmm? Huh? Don't get too quiet on me now. What are we talking about here when I said, what are your hands busy doing? Are they staying clean or are they catching a whole lot of bacteria? that's getting inside of you, that those demons are getting inside of you. And so in the book of Matthew chapter 12 right here that I'm talking about, the demon comes, the, 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 the spirit of God comes and say, I'm going to set you free. Right, Just yeah. like when you go to the doctor, he's going to give you some antibiotics yeah. to get rid of the bacteria. All right, all right. Huh? Anybody hear me today? Yeah. Seven days, three days. Yeah, yeah. But after a while, after three days or seven days, it's all done. Uh -huh. Bacteria don't come back unless you're going to keep getting your hands in the wrong place. So when we begin to think about, come on, talk to me, Holy Spirit. When we begin to think about the bacteria, I want to talk to you about the demons. Right now, mm -hmm. yeah. now, a lot of folks get in their hands in the wrong place, and the demons get in because you don't open the door, yeah. and you don't open it wide. So when the demon come in, it may not be but one or two up in there. You trying to figure out what's wrong with you. You're hallucinating. You want to jump up off the bridge because you really don't know what's happening to you. So then you go and you go to the body of Christ or you go to the woman or man of God of Christ and you said, I need to be delivered. I need to be prayed for. So we pray for you. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Guess what, though? When you get prayed for, you sit out and already went over there and talked to the church. I done got prayed for. I'm good now, so I don't need to go back. But them hands get busy again. Mm -hmm. And so when them hands get busy again, they got all these demons coming. So now we don't got out the one that was in you. But all of a sudden, look what happened. Because, because you don't trust God. Because you didn't put the spirit of God, you didn't pray and let the spirit of God stay in you. You let him go out of the way. He said, when an evil spirit, in verse 43, comes out of a person, come on, we don't got rid of the bacteria, antibiotic, right. huh? It goes through dry places looking for a place to rest. But it doesn't find anything. What is he going to do? Then he say to himself, I'll go back to the home I left. And when he arrives, what's in there? It's unoccupied. You done got prayed for, but you ain't received Jesus. You ain't received the power of the Holy Ghost. You just done. Ooh, I'm free for just for a minute. Mm. Oh, come on, somebody work with me. Mm. Then when, we get, when he get there and finds the house is unoccupied, but guess what? It's swept and clean, and it's in order. Uh -huh. Did anybody hear me? It's in order. Right. Oh, somebody didn't hear me. It's in order. Huh? Oh, wow. So you say. In verse 45, he said, Then it goes, it goes and brings along seven other spirits more evil than itself. Wow. Somebody ought to wake up today. So I thought about bacteria. I say, now, you can have one little bacteria bug. Huh? And the doctor say, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give you seven-day antibiotics to get rid of this. So he give you the seven-day antibiotic, and, and you're going to say, I'm cool. I, I don't need it but three days, you know, so I don't got rid of that. I don't feel no problems no more. You know, that's gone. Oh, wow. But you don't realize there's some looming ones waiting on you. That's why homeboy said, when I left, I'll be back. Because I know you ain't clean yet. I know you ain't clean. You done swept and did everything. But ain't nothing occupied in there named Jesus. So I'm going to go get all my homes and bring them back. I'm not just coming back. I'm going to bring seven more wickeder than me. Then you really got a problem. 
Now you're trying to figure out which way you're going because you're twitching and doing all kinds of stuff now because they're in there. So when we look at mm, the deceiving spirits of demonic spirits, uh -huh. huh? deceiving spirits of demon and demonic spirits, what did Timothy say? I want you to go to 1 Timothy 4 with me. Look what Timothy said. What I do with that little pencil line? God is talking to the church today. Mm. Yeah. We assume that we're safe. Yeah. Don't never assume that you're safe if you're not right with God. Because, mm. you know, you can get delivered from one demon, and then you go back and get seven more. Huh? You know, God read old joke, but now here come the rest of them. Huh? A lot of people say, you know, I don't, I, don't, I, I don't drink no more, Pastor. You got rid of drunk. But guess what? All the others coming now. Because you ain't did nothing. You ain't left Jesus in. You ain't let the spirit in. I'm good. I'm done. No, you're not done. You're done, all right. Yeah, not the done you think, though. Anybody with me? First Timothy chapter 4, are you with me? Listen what, listen what he says. I want to start at the beginning in verse 1. He said, the Spirit says clearly that in the latter times, some believers will desert the Christian faith. That's the folks that got that bacteria that got it out and they done left it open. Uh -huh. They will follow spirits and, de and that deceive, and they will be believed the teachings of demons. That's why he came back with seven. He says in verse 2, these people will speak lies disguised, disguised as truth. Their consciousness have been scarred, really seared, as if branded by a red hot iron. They will try to stop others from getting married and from eating certain foods. Huh? God created food to be received with prayers, didn't he? Of thanks by those who believe and know the truth. Verse 4 says, everything God created is good. Nothing should be rejected if it's received with prayers of thanks. God's word and prayer sets it all apart. Are you with me today? Why am I saying this to you today? I'm telling you today that what's happening here, when we look at 1 Timothy 4, and you listen to the, 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 the word that God is talking about, he's saying the Spirit shall clearly, that in the latter times, some believers would desert the faith. Christian faith. Let me tell you what happened. When they got delivered, they said, well, you know, I'm good now. I don't need no Jesus no more. I'm good. And the devil roaring like a lion trying to find out who can he find. And he, he, he saw something. Oh, wow. Yeah, they went over there into that place and got that out. But gosh, dog, it's open door for me. And he think about it. He said, you know what? They got me out, but I'm going to get seven of my other friends back. I'm going to bring them all in. Uh, and when you bring them all in, guess what? You get a whole bunch of things going on. And the people trying to find out what happened to me. What's wrong? Why am I acting like this? Because you didn't, you didn't keep God in you. You didn't even want the spirit of God in you. So you try to play God. I'm telling you, God's door is a walk-through door. It's not the door that you walk in. God's door is clear to walk right in. And so when, when you allow the enemy to come in, what are you doing? What is he doing? It's called spirit possession. So when he brought back seven demons, what did he bring? He brought seven demons to possess you. You don't know if you're coming or going, your hair all over your head. You don't know if you're supposed to go there. You don't know what's going on. Mm. And so when the seven demons come, some people need to wake up. Because guess what? They don't come to be having a party. Like you think, they having a party, but it ain't your party. See, when the demons come, they're coming to kill, steal, and destroy. That's their job. Uh -huh. When you begin to think about the young man in the book of Mark, Mark 9, how he was running around, uh, cutting himself, falling in the fire, doing all kind of crazy stuff, slobbing at the mouth because they had got a hold of him. Uh, and nobody could help him until the Son of God showed up. Mm. And the Son of God didn't say nothing about the boy. He said, devil, come out. Uh, so when we begin to think about the Spirit of God, that's why I say, what you doing with your hands? What you doing with them? Mm? Are you busy with them? What, what, what kind of business are you doing? What kind of spiritual death are you working with? Or are you doing with a spiritual life? Don't you know that you can do whatever you think you're big enough to do? Huh? 
Everybody always uses the saying, it's your thing, do what you want to do, but it's God's spirit. It's God's spirit. And God's going to count your spirit. Guess what? Your body is so We'll go back where it belonged to. We don't talk about that a lot of times. But the spirit of God that has been given to you, uh, that have given you a choice, uh, but when you get saved, the spirit of the, that God blowed in you and the spirit of God that's in you, oh, baby, that's when things start turning. Hmm? Yeah. So that's the reason why that when that spirit was in that house, if you notice, the Bible says it was clean but unoccupied. A lot of folks will go get clean, but they are unoccupied. Well, you know, I'm saved now. I go to church now and everything. But what are you doing for Christ? Who's living in you? Are you filled with the Holy Ghost? Are you just living for Christ? And you think you can just run into the building and run back out? The devil was like, Ding! got that one. Come on, y'all. Huh? When I think about the realm of the enemy, the principalities and rulers in darkness, when I think about them, they come in legions. They don't come just one. They come in legions. You know why? Because every one of them have an assignment. One is to dog mess with your brain. The next one is to mess with your health. Huh? When you start thinking about people, they feel, I don't know, oh, I don't know. I, they're twitching and you're trying to figure, oh, they don't hide. No, they ain't hide. There's some demons. You're twitching and the minute you block out God, the minute he comes in, the enemy likes to get in quickly because he knows once he get in and he get possession, he's in control. You're not. We have to be mindful of these demonic spirits. It's important. Spiritual possession of an individual. Also, man loses sense of shame and conscience, which causes alienation. Anybody notice that people that's demonically oppressed, they don't want to be bothered with you. They want to stay by themselves. And they stay. Like, what's wrong with them? Oh, they must be high. No, that's some demons talking. They don't want to talk to nobody. They don't want to be around nobody. You know why? Because the demons are working. If you stay around them too long, you may get one on you, in you. Mm. There's a purpose why the, the Almighty God and the Son of God said, my father will leave another comforter. That means we are not left alone. Huh? We are not left alone. And you know what? Think about it. Why would God say he'll leave another comforter? Huh? Have anybody ever thought? Of, well, you know, Jesus did everything. We saved now. Jesus done died for us. Everything is well. He said, I got to leave you another comforter. You know why? Because you need some leadership. You need some direction. Huh? How many people got a car that your car say, turn right, back up, turn off the car, So the world already letting you know they going to give you some direction. Right. They going to tell you how to get there. Right. They going to tell you how much gas you got. You better hear me today. Yeah. But God is talking to his children too. Yeah. And what do we do? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's the fly over there or something. That's must be, I don't know what that is. No, that's the Holy Ghost trying to talk to you. Right. A lot of times you get that, and the Lord say, shut up. And you're going, who that talking to me? The Holy Ghost trying to talk to you. Sit down. Be still. You're going, what? Let me call and see what that my daughter trying to tell me what to do. Where's my husband? He talk No, the Holy Ghost be talking. Well, you know, I think I'm going over my home, girl. And I know they fighting and doing all kind of stuff over there. And I'm going over there. I'm going to check this out. And the Holy Spirit say, nope. And you say, I don't know why I'm tripping. I must be tripping. The Holy, Holy, Holy Ghost say, no. And you go over there. And guess what? The minute the girl opened the door, the young lady that went with the friend got killed. At the door. But folks want to hit the ear. Oh, I'm tripping. What you tripping on? You? Come on now. We got to be mindful that the possession of demonic spirits is real. So I want to just talk to you a little bit about some of the things that I've watched in the body of Christ. So let's look at Hebrews chapter 6. Look at Hebrews chapter 6. A lot of people want to know why folks don't want to go into the body of Christ. They don't, they don't want to have nothing to do with the body of Christ. Oh, you know, that's all they want, your money. They don't want nothing else. You know, you all, you want a whole bunch of stuff too, but you don't want to do nothing else. <laughs> and only folks want to come to church. Can you tell me what time it'll be for me tomorrow? 
Can you tell me how much is in my bank uh, account next week? How about you find out if Jesus is going to let you live tomorrow? Come on now. Let's be real about it. Let's be real now. Hebrews, are you with me? Chapter 6. Listen carefully. In verse, I'm going to start at verse 4. Some people once had God's light. Y'all listen to me. Somebody going to wake up real quick. They experienced the heavenly gift and shared in the Holy Spirit. I know a lot of folks that did that. They experienced the goodness of God's word, the power of the world to come. Yet they have deserted, desert Christ. They are crucifying the Son of God again and publicly disgracing him. Therefore, they cannot be led a second time to God. That's a spooky for me. I didn't say it. The word said it. So guess what? When you begin to think about how God done delivered you, don't you realize that when God delivered you and that seven come back, he come back seven strong. That means you got seven demons. You may just have one demon, just one demon, huh? Or getting high or drinking or whatever, one demon. And, 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 and you say, you know what, I'm going to go on back over there. I'm clean now. My hands is clean. Your hands are not clean. They full of bacteria. And here that thing come. And the, and, the, and the key for me is when he said unoccupied. That means the spirit of God ain't there. So guess what? Are you kidding? I'm bringing a whole crew this time. I bet you they're going to have a hard time getting all us out of there. That's what the devil's saying. Hmm? Yeah. So when we look at the word in the book of Hebrews, he makes it clear. It's clear here. A lot of people say, oh, this is not good. You know the light and you're ran from the light. Do you understand there are a lot of people that say they have the light of God, but they really, the light is up here and they, yeah. they're up under. Mm -hmm. That's just like you go to the doctor and you got all this bacteria in your hand and they don't give you the antibiotic and you didn't want to take it, so now you got triple what you had. Right. Uh -huh. That's exactly what the word is saying about the enemy when you allow the enemy to come, come, come in your life when God done got him out. Right. So now he said, you know, I can't do this by myself. So, you know, one, two, three, four. I've learned something, seven is completion. <laughs> so that means we going to, they, in other words, we coming, they coming to tear down now. Hmm. And then you try, you don't know what's wrong with you. You don't know why you're going through all that. You can't sleep at night. You can't eat right. You, you don't know what's going on because you done took the light, let the light get out. And you done brought in darkness. Darkness cannot comprehend light, you know. Yeah. So you can't serve the devil and God too. It's not going to work. Hmm. So when you begin to think about in, in, in the book of uh, uh, Hebrews, and you look at the word, God is making it very clear. A lot of people say, oh, yeah, you know, we don't serve a God like that. Well, that's what the word says. And God, my, the Bible says that the Lord says, my word will not return unto me void, but it will accomplish everything that I sent it out to. And he's pleased about it. How about that? So when we understand what he's saying, we got to be mindful. When you look at this word, he talks about the word, the powers of the world to come. He talks about some people once had light. So when I think about light, if you dark, come on, somebody work with me. If you dark and you get before one of the, 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 the mighty men or women of God that's going to pray for you and the spirit of God going to bring that thing out, why would you go back to darkness when it's going to get darker? You just had one little creeping crawler in there now. Huh? Now you don't open the door to the whole family. Hmm? And then you think you're getting away with it like God can't see you. That's the part that scares me. Yeah, you don't, you don't think God see nothing. He, he don't see nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you wonder why things are happening and, and, and what's going on in my life. Huh? God, where are you? Why are you not listening to me? Huh? One thing I love about the Lord, he will give you an opportunity to make it right. That's what he will do. Now, I want to show you something else that a lot of people probably ain't paid attention to. I want you to go to Mark. I want you to go to Mark chapter 4. I'm going to show you how the, devil, how the devil comes against the people of God, and we don't even take time to think about, oh, I'm good. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in the children's. I he deal with the children. I, you know, I preach on the, you know, and, oh, and I'm the deacon. I'm the minister, and, you know, oh, I'm an evangelist. Oh, you better be careful. Much is given, much is required. That's the word. Much is given, much is required from God. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know about you, but it's a lot of times I have to get before the throne and say, Lord, you know, 
help me, guide me, get that thing out of my mouth, get that thing out of my heart, because I'm mad right now. And Jesus said he wasn't mad when he told them, I forgive them, for they know not what they do. Hmm? So we got to be mindful. Are you in Mark chapter 4? Listen carefully. I hope somebody get this quickly. In verse 14, it says, the farmer plants the word. Anybody hear me today? The farmer plants the word. Then he says, some people are like seeds that were planted along the road. Huh? But listen what happened. Whenever they heard the word, Satan comes at once and take away the word that was planted in them. So guess what? If God done gave you the word, which he have, and you allow him, the enemy, to come in and snatch it out, who are you? What you, what you doing now? Because one thing that I learned about the enemy is that when God plant the word, he behind God trying to snatch it out. Anybody get it? Uh -huh. He don't want you saved. You go to church and get saved at night, you fall on your face and you're trying to figure out what happened and you know, fell on the, you know, you go, you get a letter, you know, your check bounced, and you're like, what's wrong? Be still and know that he is God. Because the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But he can also confuse you. Huh? You don't, you don't, God done already told you who you are and what you are, and then you go back and you say, oh no, the devil, huh? I, no, no. Great is he that lives in me than he is in the world. God said it, I'm receiving it. Just receive it. So when you look at this, this scripture here, basically what this scripture is saying in, in Mark, God planted the word. Huh? Yeah. He said he, he planted some of it, uh, uh, the, the seeds that were planted along the road. Uh -huh. hmm? He said when, whenever they heard the word, Satan comes at once right. and take away the word that was planted in them. You know, and when I think about the road, how many roads you've been on and God done planted the seed and you done spit it out on the way going? Yeah. Hmm? Think about it. How many people have come to your life and said, you know, God wants you to do this. God loves you. You need to be obedient to the spirit of God. And you, you ain't spitting it out. The devil taking it. Because you sitting there trying to figure out if it's really God. The devil said, no, that ain't God. Let me get it right quick. Uh -huh. That's the demonic spirit of the devil. He comes to kill. He comes to steal. And he comes to destroy. That's why I'm going to say this again. I'm going to say this again. Are your hands giving life or death to your spirit? Because think about it, when you're doing things, there's one or two things that you're doing. Somebody work with me today. You're either using your feet or you're using your hands. Huh? Huh? So what are, you, what are you using them for? Are you using them for the spirit of God or are you allowing the devil to take you down road A instead of road C? Hmm? Are you being obedient to the spirit of God or you know, you, you, you know the devil, he's, he's, he's conniving. Not only that, you know, the Bible tells us, say, darkness cannot comprehend light. So the devil likes to play in the dark. Anybody hear me today? Yeah. He knows that if you try to play too much in the light, bing, the Holy Ghost going to see you. But guess what? The Holy Ghost going to see you whether you're in the dark or the light. Uh, yeah. You want to know why? Go to John. Let's go to John right quick. The Gospel of John, chapter 1. Look at the word itself. Yeah. Look at the word itself. It speaks for itself. John chapter 1, the gospel of John. Look what the, body, the word says. I, I think this is important for this body of Christ today. It says in verse 1, in the beginning the word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. He was already with God in the beginning. Everything came into existence through him. Not one thing that existed was made without him. He was the source of life, and that life was the light for human, 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 humanity. Thank you, Spirit. Verse 5 says, the light shines in the dark, and the dark has never extinguished it. Extinguished it. And if you look in the King James Version, it says, the, the darkness cannot comprehend the light. So don't you know the devil play in the dark? And you know what I learned about darkness? I used to always say, yeah, so when the light is, you know, in the daytime is light, you know, night is, is, is dark, or, or, you know, so, but I learned something about day and night. One of the things that I learned about day, folks play night and day. Yeah. 
Anybody hear me today? Yeah, folks go hide down there in the, in the Hilton Hotel and they think they're in the dark. Ain't nobody looking. Holy Ghost still looking. <laughs> yeah, matter of fact, let's hit this corner over here. While they hit the corner over there, you still in the darkness. You still in the light, God looking at you. But you in your little dark cave, you know, ain't nobody looking, so you think everything's cool. It's dark. No, it ain't cool. God shines bright all over the place. There's nowhere to be hidden from God. It's nowhere to be hidden. And the cold part about it is I understand why God from the day the world started to today and on end, there's prophets. There's what we call seers. When I look at the Bible and listen to some of the seers and the prophets that are talking, I shiver. You want me to tell you why? Because they did too. They said, Lord, do you really want me to go and tell them that? Huh? Do you really want me to tell them that? Lord, do you really want me to say that? Can you imagine what Peter had to do when Ananias and Sapphira walked up there in line and they dropped dead in front of him in Acts chapter 5? Huh? So guess what? When we go back and look, you may hide from man, man, male and female. You may even hide from the sun. You may even hide up under the moon, but you sure ain't going to hide from the Holy Ghost. He is not a liar. One of the things that I've learned about the Spirit of God, when people lie to the Spirit that's in God's kid, something going to happen. Simple. Simple. It's better to say, I done sin, and Lord, forgive me. Pray for me. Huh? Instead of lying, because when you lie, Liars of the devil. Amen. Yeah, a liar is of the devil. Seriously. Yeah. So when we look at what we're seeing here, we got to be mindful. I'm like, are you kidding? You, this is what you want? The Lord said, this is exactly what I want you to talk about. We have to be mindful. And I'm going to say this again. Spiritual possession of an individual, also man lose sense of shame. Huh? Listen, and consciousness, huh? And causes separation from people because you're running and you're hiding. And you, mm. When you think about in the book of Mark that I just told you about how the enemy takes the word, the Lord, he seeds the word. Seed. Anybody with me? Seed. Can you think about it? God seeds the word like he do this. Hmm? He seeds the word. And guess what? You go and you get it. Uh, he throws a seed so that you will be set free. Uh, and as God throwing his seed, the word of God, so you can be connected to God, here come the devil and snatching it from you because you're too busy walking around the seed instead of inheriting the seed. Well, that looks good. Maybe tomorrow i got to finish doing what I'm doing today. <laughs> you just messed up. I'd rather be a believer, saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, and have issues. Amen. Somebody ought to wake up today. I like it when people get on TV and everywhere. I'm perfect. I'm the pastor. No, you are not. You are not perfect. Sorry. Only person that's perfect is Jesus. We got Jesus in us to keep us to be perfect. And we can't even do that because we got our own faculties. Right. Oh, honey, you know, I really love you. You know, I love you. They say, what you want? You don't flip the script just that fast. Why? That's the man in you. Yeah, hmm? yeah, yeah. That's the man. That's the man with the, the faculties, with the, with the mind and with the heart and the conscience. My conscience don't feel good today, so leave me alone. You ain't saying it that way, but that's why you say, I don't even bother with you today. Well, what's wrong with you? I just don't feel to be bothered. Lord, help me. <laughs> Holy Spirit be saying, uh, what's wrong? You know, I just don't want to be bothered today. I can't do what I want to do. It's messing up my day. <laughs> Come on, somebody, work with me. Mm. So you, you, you got to be mindful. Who Jesus. We got to be mindful of the spirit of God and the spirit of the devil. Do you know that spiritual warfare? Huh? Do you know because God has, what did the angels in heaven say? They said, what is it about them human beings down there? 
Because we've been created in his image, but he has given you a choice. You know what I'm talking about. Go to the store and tell me which soda you want. Root beer, Pepsi, grape soda, ginger ale, huh? orange pop, or mop, whatever you just call. What you want? Mm -hmm. Then we play the game. I'm not supposed to be drinking sodas. That's where I get some. You know, maybe, maybe I can, maybe I can get some Gatorade. It got a little sugar in it. <laughs> Ginger ale ain't really soda. Yes, it is. Come on, somebody. And when we look at it like that, you got to look at yourself. And you know why you got to look at yourself? Because you know everybody have a taste bud, don't they? Some people like peach cobbler. Some people like sweet potato pie. I don't care too much about peach cobbler. I love to make it. But I love sweet potato pie. Now I'm finna really take you somewhere. Right, yeah. Now y'all can just laugh all day if you want to. Some men like big buddy booty. Come on, Some like thin booty. <laughs> Come on, work with me, somebody. Preach it. I'm just trying to tell the truth. Yeah. But guess what? God knows who he wants for you. Yeah, huh? Sometimes you got your imagination all built up. Yeah. I can already see my man. Or I can already see my wife. Uh -huh. They're going to look just like this. And uh -huh. boom, you get the wrong one. You thought. <laughs> but that was the right one from God. Oh, somebody here. Yeah. So we got to be careful. Amen. We got to be careful of our faculties. Amen. Your taste bud. Amen. Huh? Your, your taste bud. Your smell bud. Huh? Amen. Your conscious mind. Yeah. Your heart. Yeah. Your heart be just thumping 100 miles a minute because that dress is so tight. Next week you see you like, oh, wrong one. <laughs> because we're in self. But when you really look at the spirit of God, the Lord say, no, baby, that's not it right there. You going, come on, Lord, are you kidding? All your faculties just boom, 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 going crazy. Come on. And God listening, going, what in the world? You, 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 but, but you know what? You don't step out of the Holy Ghost for a minute. Holy Ghost, I'll be back. Don't move. I got to do me for a minute right now. And I, got about six or, I got about six or seven faculties in there, and they all tripping. Uh -oh. And then your conscious mind go, don't do that. And you tell the conscious mind, shut up. And heart saying, just beat it. Just beat it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and guess what? When it's not right, when you get done, you're on the floor. <laughs> Help me, Lord. Forgive me, Jesus. Ain't too late. God always forgives us. But guess what? Consequence comes before it leaves behind that. There's a consequence of everything. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because our faculties, you know, we, we, we want to do all these things. And one of the reasons why I'm here today is because I want you to know, when God deliver you, don't let seven more come back. It's going to be bigger than what you had. Huh? That means you just had one little problem. And God got it out of you. Now here you, here you bring in a whole crew. Seven is completion. That means boom, 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 boom. All seven coming. Now you got one hitting you on this end. That end, your brain, your mind, all that. Your body. You're trying to figure out what's wrong with me. What's wrong with me? Because you don't allow seven demons to come in. And guess what? Those are rulers, principalities. They come for a reason. They not coming to play with you. Mm -hmm. You be like, I don't know why I'm tripping right here. Yeah, and they in there, bing, boom, boom, boom. Huh? Oh. I'm, I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody. So when we think about the enemy and how he comes back to take, the devil is dangerous. And I want you to know this today in 1 Peter 5, 8. 1 Peter 5, 8, the devil moves daily, all day. How many people knew that? All day. 1 Peter, I want you to go to 1 Peter 5. All day he's rolling. You think you're rolling and chilling? <laughs> uh. Yeah, you're rolling, all right. He's rolling right with you. One of the things that I've learned as a child of God and being a human being, there's always something going on in your mind, always something happening in your heart, and you're trying to figure out which way to go and how to do it. And, you know, I find it a blessing to be able to come before the throne of grace boldly and ask God for forgiveness. I thank God for that. I think it's very important that we do that because in our lifestyle, in our lifetime, 
I mean, you can be with your husband. Y'all just as lovely and having a good time. And then he can say the wrong thing. What? What you talking about? And you know, it's when we, the head get the moving, the head get the flag back. And, you know, all kind of, and the husband looking like, what's wrong with you? I'm almost done kicked off for something. <laughs> but one of the things that I've learned, you have to be mindful of who you are and who you belong to. Sometimes if you stop and think for a minute after you done went off, and you stop and think about it for a minute, yeah. you have to go back and say, baby, I'm sorry, I just wasn't feeling good today or something. You got to do something. You, know, you got to make it right. Yeah. You know, sometimes I, I can get a little upset yeah. about some things. I'm trying to get stuff quick. And I said, well, just wait, hold on. He said, what's wrong with you, woman? I think you need to go in there lay down for a little while. <laughs> and I ignore him like, really? And about 10 minutes later, he said, you ain't laid down yet? Uh -huh. I think you need to go lay down a little bit, woman. Yeah. I go lay down there. Let me get Get in any chair or something, you go do something. You lay down. You got too much going on or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you got to think about who we are and, and, and how we process. But look, are you in First Peter? I want you to listen to this carefully. I think this is really going to bless somebody today. So in First Peter chapter 5, I want to read exactly what I read. The Bible says this here. Now I'm going to start at verse 7 to get to my point. Turn all your anxiety over to God because he cares for you. Anybody get that? Amen. I'm going to say it again. Turn all your anxiety over to God because he cares for you. But look what he said in verse 8. Keep your mind clear and be alert. Anybody see that? You know why he's telling you that? He said your opponent, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion as he looks for someone to devour. That's deep. So the devil, do you know, let me, can I help somebody today? Don't, don't, don't cut up. Look, I'm going to do the female side first. Brother looking like, where my wife at? Huh? That's the woman. Do come on. Where your wife at? Baby, you sure look good. Hey, babe. I'm a, hurry up, yeah. And the devil just right me in there prowling. You doing all in the devil just like hey, he, he, he come, don't get it. Hurry up. And then you know what? You don't you don't understand when the devil is roaring like a lion. Guess what? Your wife could be in the supermarket and she on the way to get to get her uh, stuff at the counter. She can check out. But when she get to the checkout counter, she done dropped a whole bottle of spaghetti sauce. The devil know what he's doing. His husband outside. What's your name, babe? Hey, give me that number right quick. You married? No, that's my sister. It's on. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but you know why? Why he prowling? You ain't saying praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, keep my eyes right. You you let the devil just. Ooh, it's, boy, look at that fine leg right. This got a big old booty on it. You know how y'all do. <laughs> why am I saying that today? Because the devil is roaring. Think about a lion. So you'll see brothers going, mm, mm. hey, baby. That one go, hey, sweetie. Huh? And then women try to be so cool about it. Look at that brother there. You see how sharp he is. Look at him. Big, look at his chest. Look at him. Look at, look at the legs. You see? Girl, you can see that? Are you kidding? <laughs> that ain't nothing but the enemy. Huh? And then the bad part about it is, God is so good. Don't mess around and have a wife that's saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. You come out the door and you don't got caught. <laughs> <laughs> baby, was that your cousin? Yeah, baby, that was my aunt so and so. You, you, you understand? You think I'm gonna believe that? I was standing in the door for 20 minutes while you talking to her. Uh, 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 the devil be roaring. Huh? Yeah. But look what the word says in verse 9. It says, be firm in the faith and resist him. Huh? He said, knowing that other believers throughout the world are going through the same kind of suffering. Huh? So you ain't the only one. You know, a lot of people want to say, well, pastor preaching on me. No, you ain't by yourself. Trust me. Yeah. Huh? That flesh and that faculty is something else. Huh? 
you know, you you minding your own business, you married, you doing fine, you think everything is cool, and you ain't with your husband, and this fine thing walk up to you and say, baby, you sure look good. And you're like, hmm. <laughs> 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 well, I, I still got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to tell the truth and shame the devil today. Uh, <laughs> so the point that I make here is you got to keep these hands clean. Uh, uh, you you, 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 got, you got to be mindful. Uh, uh, don't be so busy with your hands. And the reason why I keep saying about the hands, because, you know, a lot of times you can be with your wife and you can do one of these. Wife over there, you. And some men will be. <laughs> Give me the number while the wife over there. Come on, somebody talk to me. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> huh? But God, but God, keep your hands clean. Huh? Keep them to yourself. Huh? And then, then you won't have no unclean hands with bacteria, huh? <laughs> my, my, my. My, 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 my. So that's why when he talks about the devil is roaring, he's roaring right while you're walking. He's talking to you. Guess what? That blue car right there pulling up, it's a fine thing coming up in there. You know, your wife in the, in the, in the, in the grocery store, she be, you know, she take forever to come out. Don't worry about nothing. And, and you see the woman going, you go, mm, mm, mm. I'm going to try to behave myself, Lord. Hey, baby, you sure looking good. Where your husband at? I ain't got one. Next thing you know, your house is upside down. You know, you think women can turn their head. They don't got bad nowadays. They do more than turning their head. They lobby pop you dead still. Bam! What you slap me for, woman? For that woman that was over there talking in that blue car. That's what that means. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. So listen carefully. A clean spirit loves worship and praise. Huh? Worship and praise. God honors worship and praise. God wants us to worship and praise him, right? Because it's power in praise, huh? We need the power of praise. Somebody need to go to Psalms 95. We need to be mindful. You need to pray so hard in the morning time and in the evening time and in between time because you can't just get it at all at, at, at the assembly. Because, you know, when, when you walk out the door, the devil's already moving. Huh? But when you begin to praise God yeah. and worship God, he's inhabiting your praise. Yeah. It ain't just for 30 minutes here. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. It should be further than that. You should be on the way home. Hallelujah. Yeah. You need to get up in the morning. Hallelujah. You know what you're doing? That devil that's ruined, he's going to go to the next house and pass. Yeah. Yeah. But when you get up in the morning, well, you know, I don't feel too good. Yeah. Uh, you know, today is another day. You just opened up gateways for the devil. And he said, well, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to show you that fine man coming by. I'm going to show you that cute girl that's walking by. And you're going to be like, hey! Uh-uh. Amen. No. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek it. We have to seek it. And when he's speaking of seeking it, it's daily. It's daily. It's daily. Uh, I don't care where you're going in the house. Uh, you can go in the bathroom, you can go in the bedroom, you can go in the closet. Hey, hello, good morning, Dad. Yes. Hello, Father, I need you today. Yes. Cover me from all wickedness. Yes. Yes. Because see, these eyes are dangerous. The hands are worse. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, you're looking. The Bible says if you look at it, you already did it. Uh -huh. But what about some of them fellas walking around? Oh, baby, you know, let me touch that. Yeah, oh, goodness. Come on, somebody. You're in trouble right there. Just touching it. Because it ain't yours. You better touch your own thing that you got. <laughs> Anybody at Psalms 95? It's time for me to get out of here now. <laughs> God is good. Not me, but him. God is good. He's talking to the church, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm telling you. Now, you know, I find it amazing with some people, they say, oh, pastor, you know, oh, hallelujah, I'm so hallelujah, I'm holy, you know, praise God. And the minute you be standing at the pool pit, them, some of the men and women walk in, and they tight as they can get them, and they looking good, legs sharp, and me. And the pastor, I, uh, uh, <laughs> I 
I'm just telling the truth. Y'all know what I'm talking about in this day is. <laughs> I'm going to tell the truth and shame the devil. I'll probably get a phone call tonight. <laughs> but I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to tell it. They be trying to preach and all of a sudden, oh, I'm in that Joseph. No, you was in Joseph. <laughs> Psalms 95, you there? <laughs> you know what I heard the Spirit of the Lord say to me this morning when I came out the bathroom praying? He said, laughter is good for the soul. And that's the reason why I think it's so important for the body of Christ to understand. Because we're laughing about these things, but we know these things really happen. Uh, come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. I have been sitting in the restaurant with some of my friends, and they say, girl, did you see that big hunk walk right by there? I said, see the look. It's almost better to not look. Because <laughs> the first thing you do, now you now you trying to draw him to you. You be saying that, mm, mm, mm. I just like for him to pass by. <laughs> he looked that way. And you know, you know how you know how you women is. Especially when you got the eyelashes and stuff on. He walked. <laughs> he walked by and you going. <laughs> Let's get on this topic. <laughs> God is good, I'm telling you. Let's get on the night. <laughs> and then I'm going to tell you another story. See, y'all won't let me get this down. Listen, now y'all know for a fact, back in the day, when, when we was going to Miss Young, uh, guys come by. You know, you know. Today is a new day. Guys are looking going, mm, bro, did you see that? Wife sitting right across. Mm, mm. Now women are sitting around and they see this girl. Look at the come on, let's go to the bathroom. <laughs> y'all wanna go to the bathroom so y'all can walk by. <laughs> come on now. <laughs> Say and tell the truth and shame the devil. I'm just trying to tell the truth. So I want to say this today. Clean spirit loves worship and God's praise. Psalms 95. <laughs> Are you there? Yeah. Look what the Bible says. He said in verse 1, Come let us sing joyful to the Lord. Yeah. Let's shout happily to the rock of our salvation. Yeah. Let's come into his presence with a song of thanksgiving. I saw that today. Let's shout happily to him with, pray, with the psalms. Huh? Yeah. The Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth, and the mountain peaks are his. Are his. The sea is his. He made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Are you with me? He said, come let us worship and bow down. Let's kneel in front of the Lord, our maker, because he is our God. And we are the people in his care, the flock that he leads. If only you would listen to him today, do not be stubborn like, mo, mo, do not be stubborn like my people were in Moriba. Let the time of Messiah, Messiah, no, not Messiah, Messiah, stop, thank you. Mesa, Masa, in the desert, your ancestors challenged me and tested me there. Although they had seen what I have done, for 40 years I was disgusted with those people. That means we got to give praise and worship to God. I wanted you to laugh today because these things that I'm talking about today, they are real. You know, you, you know, a lot of people already know what time it is now. You know, we, got, we, ain't, we, 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 we living in a time now where women ain't sitting back and watching what husband's doing. They sit, what you doing? What's up? Bam! Oh, I saw you. I saw you looking at her. You know, well, a lot of men go, when they see a fine thing coming, they just drop their head. Is she gone yet? Yeah, thank you, Lord. <laughs> so when we think about what I'm saying, your hands must be clean. Uh, we go and get the bacteria off huh, with antibiotics. Your heart must be clean. Huh? Because if you don't and you allow that spiritual devil to get in you, guess what? When the saints get them out, what's going to happen? If you're still doing the same old thing, seven coming back. And they coming strong. Huh? And then you're going to really be in trouble. That's why a lot of people lose their family, they lose their, their everything because they are into themselves. That's why I said, what are you busy doing with your hands? What are you doing with them? And when, when, when I speak of your hands, I'm not only speaking of these hands, I'm speaking of your hands down here too. 
Where you going with them? Who, where you at? Huh? And God forbid you need to pluck your eye out if you're looking at it wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, a lot of people got eye in contact. Anybody know that? You know. <laughs> a lot of times people ain't got to say a word. But you know what? Everything in the faculties that you use, you're going to be in trouble about it. Uh, believe me. I don't care what part of it you got, whether it's your fingers, your mouth, your head, your feet, you're going to be accountable for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, all you got to do is walk around, hey, and the person's going, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Come on. The devil is alive. Mm-hmm. That's why he said he roars. And the devil's not just walking around going, mm-hmm. I'm looking for one. That's what he's doing. Especially those that say they believe in Jesus. Yeah. Oh, you say you love God? Let me, let me show God that you don't love him. You don't believe what I'm saying? Read Job. Yeah. 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 Job loved God. Yeah. And the devil went up there disguising himself as an angel, and God knew who he was. He said, what you up here for? Yeah. He said, you know, what, what you want? He, and he said, I'm, you know, I'm just roaring through the, you know, yeah. walking and straight and to see what's going on. Lord said, go on down there and try my servant Job. There, Job but Job was faithful to God. Don't you know you'll get challenged? Yeah, yeah. Just to see what you're really going to do. Yeah. And you're trying to figure out why I'm being challenged. Because you're telling God, I trust you, I love you, I, you know, you my maker. I, I, Lord, I'm good. Lord said, let's see how good you is. Here she come. <laughs> my goodness, she's only about 27. But God, dog, oh, look at that butt on her. Look at the legs on her. Man, she fine. Where my wife is? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. And that's how you get quick. You're already in trouble because your eyes have already figured out what you're going to do. Uh, and then all the faculties begin to cut up. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, whether it's a female, male, whatever, whoever it is. Be, ca- be, be careful. That's why we got to watch our head. Uh, you got to understand the spirit of God. You got to use every faculty, every faculty in your body to be right. So I'm going to give you three people right quick. Peter, 2 Peter, 1 and 1, read it. Hmm? He was a servant for God. We have to be a servant for God. And when you're going to be a servant for God, you got to get rid of all that other stuff. Hmm? Oh, don't, 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 don't think I'm playing. As being a human being, you, you, you got a taste bud. Huh? Come on, somebody. Amen. You know, you got a sin bud. Amen. You got ear buds. You know. All kind of stuff happening in your body, and you're like, why me? You better keep praying and talking to God. Because I'm here to tell you today, whether you know it or not, he's your man until you get one. Amen. Mm, wow. Amen. Peter, 2 Peter 1 and 1, put that in your notes. Amen. Paul, Paul was a servant for God. Titus 1 and 1. Then look at the end what David said. This is going to help everybody. We done laughed and had a good time. Now I'm going to show you what really is happening. I want you to go close with me in Psalms 51. Come on now. Now y'all know who I'm talking about. The man got in trouble. The man got in trouble. He was looking in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Not only was he looking, he was supposed to be doing something that he wasn't doing. Mm -hmm. So we have to be mindful. Mindful. Y'all give me about 10 more minutes. I'm done. Um, Psalms 51, are you with me? Look at Psalms 51. I want you to read exactly what happened here. It said, David is saying this, have pity on me, O God, and keep him with your mercy, and keep him with your unlimited compassion. Wipe out my rebellion acts. Huh? Wash me thoroughly from my sins and cleanse me from my sin. Huh? I admit that I am rebellion. My sin is always in front of me. Come on, somebody, you know what I'm talking about. I have sinned against you, especially you. I have done what you considered evil. So you have down." Just so you hand down justice when you speak and you are blameless when you judge. Indeed, I was born guilty. I was a sinner when my mother conceived me. Yet you desire truth and sincerity. Deep down inside me, you teach me wisdom. Purify me from sin with hesop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be white than, than, whiter than snow. Let me hear sounds of joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken dance. Hide your face from my sins and wipe out all that I have done. Look, he's always getting a plea to God. But look what he go back and say. He's smart. Create a clean heart in me. 
create a clean heart in me, oh God. He said, renew a faithful spirit within me. Huh? Do not force me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Oh my God. He said, restore the joy of your salvation to me and provide me with the spirit of willing obedience. Oh, you know, sometimes we need to go talk to God like that. Lord, renew me. Give me a spirit of obedience. Huh? Mm. So David was crying out to God because, number one, he had took a man's wife. Number two, he had murdered the husband so he could have the wife. Then she got pregnant. Huh? Oh, wow. So he had to get rid of the husband because he knew that the husband would know that that was not his baby. So he killed him. Come on, somebody work with me today. And so because of the fact that he killed him, God saw it all. The prophet was sitting around waiting to come tell him what he saw. God told him that you go tell David what he done. And that baby that you made will not live. And the baby died. Uh, my purpose that I'm saying today is that be mindful. Have a clean heart. And renew a right spirit in God. Uh, keep your hands clean. How do you keep your hands clean? You keep your hands clean when you keep your eyes clean. As they used to say back in the day, keep things in their respective places. I'll say it that way. How about that? Because when you bring the wrong things out of the respective places, you just messed up. And it's hard to make it right. God may forgive you, but your wife or husband may never forgive you. Hmm? Yeah, I don't know. So we have to be mindful of familiar spirits or those who believe in witchcraft. I heard somebody tell me one day, you know what, I started to call my friend, the one that, that, that she has put a spell on somebody. I'm here to tell you today ain't no spell coming nowhere here. I want you to start your spell, so I'm going to show you what the Holy Ghost would do. He not only going to take care of the witch, he's going to take care of you for going to the witch. Uh, somebody better read about Saul, King Saul. He went to the witch, got what he thought he needed, and he wound up getting killed and his sons too. Don't play with Jesus. Don't play with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, ain't no such thing as spells. Witches play the game spell, but guess what? It's going to turn on them. If they don't get delivered, they're going to die. That's the word. So we have to be mindful to keep our hands clean. And in the book of Leviticus, I'm giving you some notes, 1931 and 20 and 6, and verse 26 and 27, mediums who believe that can call on the dead and talk to them. That's Satan, that Satan is their master, according to Deuteronomy 18. So you got people, and a lot of people say, well, you know, Pastor, I really, I really, I really heard, you know, heard some things about that. I'm here to tell you today, the devil is, 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 is sneaky. The devil will fool you like never before. That's why God said be mindful of those demonic spirits because they'll talk and tell you stuff and you'll be all messed up in it. Because guess what? The dead know not what the living are doing. So you got folks walking around talking about I can talk to the dead. Sorry, that's a lie. Uh, but if I'm going to tell you who they are talking to, Satan. Satan. Yeah. Satan has a camp, you guys. He has a camp. He has a heaven. Did you know that? And he has a church. Wow. He counterfeits everything, how you so called cool to die, that God does. Everything God does, he wants to do it. Huh? A lot of people don't even understand, but if you get in your Bible and read it, you'll find out that the mark of God's children will be marked, and the mark of the beast is going to counterfeit that. Hmm? So you got to know who you're serving. You got to know who's trying to deceive you. Huh? You got to understand that I'm using the hands and the feet for a reason. Keep your hands to yourself. Didn't they tell you that when you was a kid? Uh, yeah. Don't be trying to pinch on nobody behind. Uh, grab somebody's shirt. Baby, you sure looking good, man. You keep your hands to yourself. Because yeah. one thing that I've learned, and I live here right here, I've been given, I've been given as a watchman. And one of the reasons of, of watchman means watch. Watch and pray. And then when the time comes, then you go and let people know God says so. One thing that I've learned, and I've learned this ever since we started in the house, it started in the house. It was so much stuff going up in the house. Am I right, y'all? Anybody know that was in the house? It was a whole bunch of things going up in the house. And I would call it out. A lot of folks kept moving because they couldn't take it. They didn't want to know the truth. I don't care if they run. Run, Charlie, run. Because you ain't going nowhere. You're going to run right into the Holy Ghost. Bam. Huh? Yeah. I find it dangerous to play in God's house. I'm scared. 
bro, whatever you got going on, you better, sister, whatever, you better go on outside that door. You can't get mingled in the body of Christ, and then you're going to take what God brought together? Oh, you in trouble. Hallelujah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's dangerous. That's why the Bible talks about the Jezebel spirit. And it's not just a female, it's a male too. If you running around Jezebel, messing around with other folks' husbands or other folks' wives, you a Jezebel spirit. You better get in that Bible and read it because that's what it says. But I close today to say to the body of Christ, be mindful of the spirit of God. He's so powerful. He's a God that loves us. He don't want to hurt us, but he wants us to be obedient to the plans that he has given us. Huh? We really have to be mindful of that because if we don't be mindful of that, then when you, you, you know you popping and you got this demon in you and you go and get it out and then you go home and, well, I'm cool now. I can get, let me get back on my road. And then here comes seven more. When seven more come, you can call it a day. Yeah. Yeah, they probably have you in a straight jacket at that point. Let's close this up. All right, I'm done. So I, I want you to be mindful. Uh, I, I, I recommend you read Deuteronomy 18 and 10. You're going to learn a lot there, too. Yeah, uh, you, know, have, you have people that talks to the enemy and, 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 and believe. Yeah. I had a person to tell me they was going to call the lady to do a spell. I said, go right on, and you're probably going to die when she get through. <laughs> yeah. You can't play with the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's why he left him here for us. Deliverance is the key. Once you get delivered, the devil going to always try to cause problems to you. But guess what? Greater is he that lives in you than he that's in the world. Amen. I'm telling you, I know it for a fact. Because uh, I didn't have sense enough to know back in the day when I was young that a, zo a, 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 a zodiac was a, a demon. I said, what? I said, oh, this is cool. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I had the big old ram around here and the big old hand. And the Lord said, take it off and beat it till you can't beat it. It was flaming in my yard. I'm like, what? Yeah, Lord, let me know what it was. It was the work of the enemy. Yeah, I said, I had bought to spend a lot of money for my little diamond thing and stuff. Lord said, you better go on and spend it on off of you. And that's exactly what they said. Oh, you are Aries? No, baby. I'm a, I'm, 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 I'm a saved, sanctified soldier. That's who I am. Yeah, that's who I am, yeah. I don't believe in Zodiac, and I know what Zodiac can do.